That's your G chord. That sucks to play. Could you imagine doing that on your first lesson? Have you ever wondered why guitars tune E, A, D, G, B, E? I mean, odds are likely you have. It's kind of weird. It's actually kind of funny, like usually the first day, you know, you're taught to tune your guitar, fifth fret open, fifth fret open, fifth fret open, fourth fret open, fifth fret open. So right off the bat, it's like, why do we have to switch that one time? So if you've been confused by it, I mean, that, that's fair as far as like standard tunings go for stringed instruments. Um, it's kind of a non-standard way of going about it. So most string instruments like the viol families are tuned in fifths. So that means each string is five notes apart. The bass is tuned four notes apart. This is not consistent. So you've got a bunch of fourths and then a third and then a fourth again. And then there's this whole argument about open tunings that sound like way more beautiful and are like way easier. I mean, it doesn't necessarily sound that good. And if I do like one finger chords, it doesn't sound that good either. Why is this the standard tuning? Why do we have to play in this weird tuning and learn so much, learn how to read in this tuning, learn all the chords when alternate tuning seem like a really cool option. But I'll make the argument for standard tuning. I think it might be the best tuning, actually. Um, and I'll give you some reasons at the end that, that, that might sway you, but let's just talk about where this tuning really came from. I guess it seems pretty understood that humans have kind of been playing music since we've been doing our thing. And there's actually this great chicken or the egg argument, like what came first, the instrument or the weapon? You can kind of spin the narrative two ways. You know, was it a hunter, bored? you know, waiting for game and just started plucking on, on the weapon? Or was it an innovative musician who thought, hey, I could use this thing to uh, maybe, you know, get some food? For the sake of the guitar, we don't have to go back that far. We can go back to the lute to find our parent tuning here. There were lots of tunings in that era. Um, there were lots of lute-like instruments. There was one lute that had a really similar tuning to the guitar. That tuning would have been E, A, D, F sharp, B, and E, which is really close to our tuning. You can see that the third interval was shifted down one string set. Kind of an interesting tuning if you try to play like that. Um, why don't we just check that tuning out really quick here. So take my G down to an F sharp, and the rest is the same. Try to play our first G chord. Which sounds kind of sad. You have to take your first finger and put it down there on that first fret to make that F sharp into a G. So it kind of looks like a C chord. Your C chord would have a little bar here. But your D chord would actually be... Okay, D's easy. D's really easy. The next obvious evolution of this instrument in tuning would have been in the Baroque era, as opposed to the Renaissance era that the lute existed in. So the Baroque guitar was only a five-stringed instrument, as opposed to the six-string lute and the six-string, you know, modern American guitar. But the tuning is actually more similar to the guitar now than it would have been the six-string lute. So the tuning on that Baroque guitar was A, D, G, B, and E. Notice that's identical to this instrument, except for it doesn't have that low E. So you can see how this just evolved into the modern guitar, like pre pretty easily. I mean, it's a valid argument that, that can be made. Like, why did the guitar have to evolve this weird tuning? Um, why did the lute have this weird tuning when other instruments that we owe just as much to had a more consistent tuning? Why? Let's do a little experiment. I mean, let's tune this instrument in all fourths, just like a bass would be because it almost is all fourths. We'd have to take our B to a C, E, F, yeah. Then it's all fifth frets. So if I were to play a G, well, I'll just play the old way. Sounds terrible. Um, to compensate for that, there's a D, I need a, I need a G there, okay. Um, I don't really know how I'd finger this. There we go. <laughs> That's your G chord. That sucks to play. Could you imagine doing that on your first lesson? Let's try a C chord, okay. That That's the same. That's actually nice. But that's... All right, there you go. So that's your C chord. This looks like jazz. This would have been your first chord. Uh, how about a D chord? There we go. That's not 
not that bad. D is actually not that bad. It looks just like A minor. That's the best one. But switching between all those? No, thank you. <laughs> it's a lot. Learning those first chords is a lot. If you look back, that's kind of the evolution of, of this instrument. It, it wasn't an instrument of, of doing lead lines um, like it's become. It, it was an instrument, it was an accompanying instrument. It was an instrument to back up a singer or play just very simple folk melodies. That, I think that's the evolution where this thing came from. It, it wasn't an instrument to, to fill a hall at all. You know, it was just an instrument of, of the people. And so what was paramount was chords, accompaniment stuff, and being able to comfortably switch between, between simple chords so you could you know, sing. So there's a lot of alternate tunings. A lot of reasons people get into alternate tunings is usually to break away from, from what's hard about standard tunings. And there's a lot hard about standard tunings. I'm not going to deny that. So, but what ends up happening is you get into this alternate tuning and the same thing starts happening where you start to discover a little more about it and then you discover just how hard it is to replicate your ideas. Just like it's hard to transpose and replicate ideas in this tuning. And so you start to fall into the same traps and so you try a new alternate tuning and it's just really what's happening here is you're discovering that music is just really vast and really challenging and and that's okay because you get your whole life to spend some time figuring it out you know and i think standard tuning it, ha it has some of the most advantages of, of any of these tunings you know once you learn how to break this thing in, in two halves and so you have your bass half and your treble half and you connect those things and a lot of great guitar thinkers have spent a lot of time scale mapping and, 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 and figuring this thing out, the math behind this thing, and it's fascinating. But I think the best thing you could do is actually just learn from other guitar players that, that did play in standard tuning, and, and the more you learn from those other guitar players, and I'm talking like a lot of different guitar players, not just folk, not just blues, but just guitar players who, who really explored standard, the more you, you learn, you put those puzzle pieces together, it starts to map the board for you. And it's not through using scales or, or, or like just memorization patterns. It's it's really just through through using music. One guitar player in particular that taught me how to love standard tuning is, is Big Bill Brunzi. So I got a video here teaching you how to play how you want it done directly from the recording. Let's check it out next.